Hey everyone, we're in the middle of San Diego Comic-Con 2018 with lots of big trailers dropping by the minute. And so far, the one everyone, right, is talking about is Titans on uh, the DC streaming service that's coming up. And more on that and soon we will talk all about that. Uh, but welcome to New Rockstars News. It's our deep dive into all the biggest stories to come out this week. And so we're going to talk about the Walking Dead Season 9 trailer, the Joker origin movie, Birds of Prey, news about James Gunn, and Spider-Man Far From Home. I I am Eric Boss, and joining me at this table are, uh, well, it, um, it's uh, just me today. Everyone else is actually at Comic-Con. I uh, had to stay behind to break down all the trailers as they come out online. Um, so, but, uh, you know, that, that, that's fine. <laughs> no, this is, you know, essentially what I spend my free time doing, you know, just sitting alone and pretending my best friends are here with me and talking to myself in their voices. What's that mod? Oh, hi, Eric. Uh, it's, all right. And Sam, uh, blah, 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 and Philip is, that's not right. Um, uh, but, you know, it's just going to be alone time with Voss, uh, and uh, it's going to get weird. And for those who tune in hoping to fill a void with some kind of imaginary source fed nerd 2.0, don't worry, because you're going to love me because you're stuck with me. But, you know, let's get started with our top story. The trailer for DC series Titans. Now, Titans had one of the first big trailers at Comic-Con this year, and it made a very bold statement, one that we can't repeat here. But the comics version of Titans, or it's also known as Teen Titans, was led by Dick Grayson, Robin, and uh, several other younger versions of the main DC Justice League heroes. There's been kind of a rotating lineup over the years. This series will follow an adult Grayson played by Brenton Twaits. Uh, he's a detective and a violent street vigilante, and his days as Batman's sidekick are well behind him. He angrily chucks his Robin R into the wall, and he growls, F*** Batman. Bleep that, please. Uh, now, that sounds like a line that he stole from our Marvel fan commenters anytime we talk about Ben Affleck. The series will s also star Tegan Croft as Rachel Roth, a.k.a. Raven. She's a haunted empath and the daughter of a demon. Uh, Anna Diop as Coriander, a.k.a. Starfire, an alien princess who can shoot energy bolts. She can fly as well. And uh, Ryan Potter as Gar Logan, a.k.a. Beast Boy. He has, like, green skin. He can shapeshift into any animal. And and Jeff Johns has also confirmed that fan favorite characters like Jason Todd and uh, Donnie Troy, Donna Troy will also be featured in the show, uh, along with a bunch of other characters. And yeah, this trailer definitely ain't family friendly, folks. There's violence, there's blood, there's grit. Uh, I kind of hate it when people say things like it's gritty because I'm from the South. So whenever people say gritty, it just sounds like the DP smeared grits on the lens. Like, grits have no place on a set or in your mouth. <laughs> I know, that was a great joke, right, everybody? Yeah. Uh, now, when, to, when asked to explain Robin hating on Batman, Jeff Johns explained, if you look at when Robin first left Batman the comics, there was a lot of uneasiness uh, in him being lost. Titans is really a series about these different characters that are all just lost in their lives, just like the greatest comic book Titans run ever by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. It's about all these lost characters finding one another, and they're all struggling with something. And Robin is clearly struggling with his past with Batman. And we'll learn a lot about more about it and uh, what that is and why he is the way he is. Now, okay, to me, this uh, looks like DC just wants its own equivalent to what Marvel has with the Netflix universe, right? A darker and uh, tonal alternative to the family-friendly action in the movies and the major TV networks. But Johns has also said the show will take inspiration from the original Titans TV series, which ran in the 60s. He said, really, the DNA of it is in uh, the echo of the original series because it had so much drama in, in that, and it was so revolutionary for its time, which is true. We really wanted to lean into the idea that every Titan of these titans is a doorway into another genre with Rachel that's Raven it's uh, supernatural and the horror and the first seasons really focus on who Raven is and how the titans galvanize around her and you can uh, see that tone in the trailer clearly now personally I'm really excited for like a DC Universe streaming service and yeah, for, you know, better or worse, Titans looks like a promising enough flagship series for it. Now, I don't totally understand this idea of doorways to other genres within one TV series. To me, that sounds like some tonal inconsistencies. I kind of want a TV series to have one consistent tone throughout and feel like it's all part of one world rather than like every episode is kind of a different world. That sounds more like an anthology series to me, which is its own great thing. And Titans could be a great anthology series, but uh, it's, it's just the first teaser trailer. There's still a lot to... 
uh, learn about what this series will be. And, you know, uh, for those who are complaining about uh, Robin saying that line about Batman, I don't personally hold Dick Grayson's innocence to be, like, sacred. Like, the classic boy wonder reputation is why a lot of audiences have, like, historically rolled their eyes to the character, even though they shouldn't. Um, and really, uh, Grayson's evolution into the solo vigilante Nightwing was always more exciting to me, at least. So anything that brings the character closer to that incarnation, uh, I can get behind. But, yeah, uh, the jury is still out on this. Uh, I want to know what uh, you guys think about this trailer. Um, do you uh, think that they are kind of missing the mark with what Robin is supposed to be and what Titans is supposed to be? Um, and just to remind you, it will air on the DC Universe streaming service this fall. So, you know, you can start saving up that $8 a month because that's what it's going to cost you. It's going after Netflix. We'll see how well it does. Uh, but okay, some uh, breaking news that just came out this afternoon. It was reported that director James Gunn has been removed from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It wasn't officially announced that he would be the director, but he is the writer, the director of it, and he hasn't really been keeping that a secret. But he is no longer. The decision was made after it was revealed that Gunn had made some particularly racy jokes on Twitter in years past. Um, there's a lot of different ones that you can go read different articles to see. Some of them have made jokes about things like rape and pedophilia. It was really just designed for him to like push the envelope and he was trying to be a provocateur. Um, it, in today's context, it kind of looks uh, pretty alarming. Um, but he is kind of, he's apologized. You know, he said he's for a long time been a bit of a provocateur. That's what he was was trying to do in the past, but um, it uh, he regrets posting these things. And you know, if you follow James Gunn on Twitter in recent months, especially, he has gotten particularly political, and he's gotten in debates and a lot of uh, with a lot of people who disagree with him. Um, and uh, some of these enemies of him have unearthed a lot of these tweets, and it seems like they've done it as a result um, of his political disagreements with people. So. Look, as I said, he's apologized, and it's a very, very new story. There's still a lot coming out, so I don't want to draw any conclusions or jump the gun. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Inappropriate joke. Oh, guys, guys, yeah, stop the applause. It wasn't that kind of a joke. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll learn more about this as it comes out. It uh, kind of delves into like more like scandal, celebrity gossip news that we don't normally do on this channel, but I just want to update you because he's an important person that we all have been following a lot. Okay, everyone, The Walking Dead's ninth season released a trailer at Comic-Con today, and this thing is a beast. It's five minutes and 44 seconds of footage from the first half of season nine, which will premiere on October 7th. Now, before I run through this footage and break down the details that you may have missed, just to remind you guys, it has been confirmed that Rick, Andrew Lincoln, and Maggie Lauren Cohan will exit the show in this first half of the season. So a lot of what we're going to be looking at is ways for the show to kind of wind down what their characters' arcs are. And we started to see a bit of that in this footage. So let's dive into it. Okay, the trailer opens with Rick and Negan chatting in the prison cell. Now, the comics feature a huge time jump right after the all-out war storyline against Negan after that ends up. And so the show, season nine, seems to be doing that as well. It shows Rick with this big bushy beard. He has his short hair that reflects exactly what his character looks like at this point in the comics. And in the first issue back, it does end with Rick walking down into the prison cell and talking with Negan. So they do kind of have these like long chats about the nature of humanity. And is it is Rick's philosophy really right? Is it justified? And it is some of the more interesting panels from these issues of the comics. So I'm glad the show is working this in. We also see Maggie at the hilltop. Now, um, she now has her baby, finally, after like 18 months of pregnancy. Um, but the hilltop has constructed lots of medieval technology. If you look in the background, a lot of like wood-based instruments. Um, there's also a windmill. Um, that you can see. Now, she was actually given the blueprints for a lot of this technology, including this windmill, uh, from uh, Georgie last season. And if you look closely at this windmill, you can see what looks like the word Commonwealth. Now, that could be just like a street sign, but of course, the Commonwealth is a new location from the comics. And a lot of us believe that Georgie was from the Commonwealth, that she could have been the show's version of Pamela, who leads the uh, the Commonwealth in comics. It's a really advanced community. It's very militarized. They have like kind of stormtrooper-like guards, and they have like an amphitheater and uh, just they're a very advanced community so we're thinking that Pamela uh, could be Georgie on the show and that's where she's from more on that in a second. Um, there is also a shot of uh, the gang exploring an interior location with white columns and a big staircase, which looks a lot like a place from the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., or maybe some government building there. Uh, in the background is a crumbling, crumbling 
facade of the U.S. Capitol building when they're outside. So my guess is the survivors are scavenging this horse carriage from a D.C. museum, maybe the Museum of National History or um, of there's probably one of like transportation, right? Um, so that's what I'm guessing that we're going to be looking at here. Um, there's also a shot of a camp that all the survivors kind of live in uh, with a signpost. And the different signs show HQ, Oceanside, Alexandria, Sanctuary, and Toledo. I'm guessing Toledo is just a joke since, you know, it's pretty far west from where they are. Maybe there's some new characters from Toledo or they're just kind of giving you a sense of north, south, east, and west. But the interesting thing to me here is what community is missing, right? The hilltop is missing. So my assumption is that HQ refers to the hilltop. So the hilltop being considered the HQ, the center of operations, basically suggests that it's replaced Alexandria as the main base of all these characters, which could be some source of tension between Rick and Maggie. Remember, there was a scene at the end of last season where Maggie seemed to be conspiring against Rick and they were kind of laying some groundwork for potential conflict in the future that some of us had some mixed feelings about. And if you watch in this trailer, it, there is a lot of shots where there's some intergroup rivalry and restlessness and people having trouble forgiving each other. Uh, but more on that in a bit. Um, there's also a very interesting shot uh, that shows someone's boots staggering on the ground as whoever is walking in these is bleeding out. Now, considering Rick only has six episodes left, we could be looking at him here, um, but we'll see more of that as we get into the season. Uh, there's also a quick shot of Jadis on the radio with the helicopter behind her. Now, remember we saw her character trying to summon a helicopter last season, and this one has the same exact symbol on the side of it. Um, I speculated that this helicopter could be from the Commonwealth, the, like the one advanced society that we know who exists in this area, who has lots of different um, technology, and they've scavenged a lot, and they've done very well for themselves. Uh, she could have some kind of connection with Georgie, uh, but I assume this is the same helicopter, and she's trying to connect with them again, so it's it's looking like season nine will go more into that arc. Um, and uh, one of the more intriguing details from this trailer is a series of graffiti words tagged on the walls like Saviors Save Us and Final Warning. Now, Saviors Save Us probably refer to more of that um, unsettled rivalry between the groups. Maybe that some of the uh, different groups don't trust Rick's leadership and want to go back to the way things were under Negan. But Final Warning is interesting. It looks like that could be from a group called the Whisperers. Now, that's a new enemy group from the comics that we have been on the lookout for. I feel like back in season five, people were looking in the bushes and be like, I saw a Whisperer. I saw a Whisperer. But yeah, they're a group who has a very like tribal mindset and they do issue a very, um, very, very serious warnings to Rick's people uh, in a way that I don't want to spoil. But yeah, they're very like this is our side that's your side don't come near us so final warning seems like it could be from them but we also see a bunch of the new characters into the season uh including magna now in the comics magna is the leader of a small group from richmond who first shows up right after the all-out war ends she uh, is on the cover of the a new beginning arc of the comics and uh she's dan uh, she's joined by dan fogler uh from the fantastic beast movies he's he plays a character in this group as well but the craziest detail, guys, hold on to your butts. It comes in the final few seconds when Rosita and Eugene are hiding and they're trembling in fear. They're covering themselves in mud as a group of walkers pass by them. But guys, these are not walkers. These actually are whisperers. And this is the craziest deal detail. It took me forever to actually hear this, but I had to listen to it over and over again. If you listen precisely at five minutes and 15 seconds, very, very closely, turn up the volume on your headphones. You can hear one of them rasp very slowly. Where are they? It's very, very chilling, and it's one of the creepier moments from the comics as well. If you if you read the comics, uh, they think that they hear walkers talking to each other, but that's how we find that out that the whispers exist. And as I mentioned, they're they're basically just a tribe of weirdos who skin walkers, and they wear the walkers' skins to disguise themselves, and they whisper to each other to try to, to like blend in. And that's how they protect themselves, and that's how they attack other people. And when the whispers arrive on the scene, they are a huge, huge, huge game changer. So it's one of the things I'm very, very excited to see in season nine. Overall, I think this trailer was really well edited. It's really exciting. It got me legitimately pumped for season nine. The camera work and the horror imagery seems like a big step up from past seasons. I'm, uh, An Angela Kang seems like she is the right person for the job to lead this show, at least based off of this trailer. And for sure, the whispers joining the fray is definitely something we can all look forward to. It's a really, really fun arc in the comics. Now, I just have to admit that the heavy focus on inter-community conflicts just worries me. Like, 
the past seasons have, I think, spent too much time in creating and manufacturing these conflicts between characters who shouldn't be fighting. Uh, and season eight's finale included that super unnecessary scene with Maggie conspiring against Rick with Jesus. It just seemed completely out of character for all of them. I agree that in writing, conflict is important. You have to have characters who like disagree with each other. Otherwise, there's like no drama and there's no point to watching the scene. I just don't know if we need more of and more and more episodes, like entire episodes with manufactured hissy fits, right? They're, they aren't real drama between groups who have overwhelmingly mutual interests. Like I get a conflict between the saviors and others, and I get the conflict between Rick and potentially the uh, whispers and between the walkers, but like just have characters who are essentially on the same side randomly pick a fight with each other just to fill 44 minutes of runtime is one of the bigger problems that they've had on The Walking Dead in the past few years. So it looks like just based off of the, this five minutes of footage that they're going to be doing more of that. So it doesn't make me totally look forward to season nine, especially when two of the main characters are moving on. I, I don't really know what the direction is going forward yet, but I, it will be a show that I keep an eye on. I'm going to keep watching it. I just can't promise that we're going to do as in-depth episode by episode breakdowns on this channel because it seems like fewer and fewer of you guys even care about it. And it takes a ton of resources for us, right? guys right yes 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 agreed agreed i don't even watch a show what's walking dead um it just takes a lot for us to devote weekly videos and um to specific episodes of a series because you gotta imagine like four episodes in how many people really watch that episode and how what percentage of them are going to watch our videos on it so it's just hard for us to commit like days of our time to do this when there's other big things that you guys probably care more about but either way comment down below with your thoughts on this trailer I don't want to hate on it too much because I really did like this trailer and it did give me more hope for season nine than I thought I would have at this point but for now let us move on to another quick update that came out this week this one about the Joker origin movie Joaquin Phoenix confirmed that he will be starring in the upcoming Joker origin film and we now know that this early version of the man who becomes the Joker will be named Arthur Fleck now that's not any known alias of the Joker in uh, the DC Comics. This is a brand new character name and they're doing the origin story. It sounds like they're gonna be going in the direction of an 80s failed comedian, which sounds a lot like his backstory in The Killing Joke, except it was in the 80s. Um, director Todd Phillips will begin shooting this movie this fall and it has a release date of October 4th, 2019. It was reported that ZZ Beats from Deadpool 2 in Atlanta will be joining the cast of this movie in an unnamed role. They had like a casting description that went out, um, but we don't know much about what her character will be. Oh, and speaking of DC villain news, the Harley Quinn-led DC team-up movie Birds of Prey has announced its character lineup. Margot Robbie, of course, will reprise Harley Quinn after uh, she played in Suicide Squad, and she will be joined by Black Canary, that's uh, Dinah Laurel. She's a crime fighter known for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Huntress, aka Helena Bertinelli, she's a Gotham vigilante. Uh, Cassandra Kane, a martial arts expert, and uh, Renee Montoya, a uh, Gotham detective who actually has lately in the comics uh, taken on a costume identity n known as the question very interesting so the villain actually was previously announced as the penguin but now it sounds like it will be a dc villain that has never been on screen before uh at least in the big screen so i'm kind of interested to see who this could be maybe clayface we've seen killer croc and suicide squad so let me know who you think that uh villain of birds of prey will be or who you would like it to be and uh one final quick update to come out of this week spider-man far from home announced that the movie cast turkish actor numan akar as a character named dimitri now we don't know much else about the role other than his first name but in the spider-man comics dimitri uh smerdyakov is the name of the villain chameleon now the chameleon is a master of disguise some versions of the villain have given him like shape shift powers but the original and actually technically the most recent version are more practical uh, characters they wear masks of people's faces and they just like impersonate their voice and and mannerisms perfectly which i think is a bit more interesting to go in the grounded direction in this case now akar joins jb smoove who has been cast in the sequel as well along with possibly jake gyllenhaal who is still currently rumored to be playing mysterio but uh just to remind you that has not been confirmed yet so we'll give you more details about spider-man far from home as they come out um, and yeah, there are more and more updates coming out from Comic-Con as we're talking. Uh, as you're watching this video, there may be a new trailer out. Um, we're still kind of playing catch up uh, and we will be breaking down everything, all the big stuff. But um, continue to tweet us to see what trailers and what um, you want to know more about from the updates that you see this weekend. But for now, let us move on to New Rockstar's news lightning round. Now, this is a, you know, interesting situation because normally we get tweets from you guys and uh, I have to like fire them at my co-hosts. Um, 
I am really, I don't really have a co-host. I mean, there's Boba Fett back there. Uh, and, um, oh, yep, there's Groot. So these are my friends now. Um, I'm in the land of misfit toys uh, where I belong. Oh, yeah, and the Infinity Gauntlet's back here. We, we just, I, I wanted to surround myself with things that make me comfortable. Um, but uh, rather, I, I, they can't answer because they aren't real. They're only real in my imagination and sometimes in my vision uh, when I haven't taken my medication. But um, for now, I guess I'll just take all the, the questions that, uh, that we've compiled from what you guys have tweeted us. Sound good? Okay. Uh, here we go. At Small Gentleman wants to know, what's the worst ad for a good movie or vice versa? ad um so i assume by ad you mean trailer and i'm gonna say for the worst trailer for a, uh, or the worst trailer for a good movie probably first one to come to mind would be spider-man homecoming yeah because that was like a a, a good movie that i that i liked it's just a trailer kind of revealed too much and kind of included some of the moments that uh, made me a little worried about the movie it wasn't the worst trailer in the world but it's just the one that comes to mind and then the best trailer for the worst movie uh, is probably Suicide Squad. That's like the example that always comes to mind. Like, what an amazing trailer. That Bohemian Rhapsody trailer was dope, but the movie was uh, pretty pretty rough. But, I mean, and if we're talking about advertising and marketing in general, I mean, the movie Edge of Tomorrow that came out a couple years ago, the Tom Cruise movie, uh, directed by Mission Impossible director Chris, Chris McQuarrie, or maybe he just wrote it. Anyway, um, it's an amazing movie that I think just suffered from bad marketing. Like, they called it Edge of Tomorrow, and later in DVD release, they called it Live, Die, Repeat, which I think is a much more apt title that gives you a sense of what the movie is. Um, but yeah, that's a movie that, like, should have performed better, but just, like, marketing could have used a, a bit more attention to detail. Anyway, moving on to the next question, at Brendan Matthew wants to know, yo, the talkative one, you can decide which is which here, guys, even though it's the one in the middle. I guess that's me. I don't know. Uh, which one you would you prefer, reading the Game of Thrones books or listening to the audio book? Um, I'm only talkative because I have to, like, read the copy. You know, I don't know if you noticed that, like, as soon as, like, I, I finish setting up the topic, I immediately want the other host to weigh in. But I guess technically you're right. If you do a word count breakdown, I'm probably talking more, especially this episode. I mean, I've been hearing lots of voices, but you can't hear them because you're not in my head. Yeah, Boba Fett's mad because his movie got canceled and, and Groot's... Uh, you know, he's upset about other current events, too. Uh, it's just too soon to talk about. Anyway, my uh, to answer your question, I would say read the books. You know, we don't read enough books. The audiobooks of Game of Thrones are awesome. Don't get me wrong. But, like, yeah, uh, train your eyes. Read books. We should all just be reading things on pages more. I think it's it's better for our minds, and it makes you look smarter. Um, okay, at I Am The Curve wants to know, would you rather fight a Hulk-sized Thor or 10 Thor-sized Hulks? Um... I would say one Hulk-sized Thor, because at least he's still destructible, whereas the Hulk isn't. And he'd probably be clumsy, because the Hulk's not used to having, or the Thor's not used to having the Thor. It's not used to, whatever, you get it. Okay, uh, I'll take one more. Uh, at Cappy Kid wants to know, what's the worst haircut you ever had? Oh, I actually have a good story for this one. Philip would be great to, to tell this story. But uh, when we were in college, we did a sketch show. Right, Philip? Yeah, we, it was my birthday yesterday, and I'm uh, doing other stuff today. Happy belated birthday to me. Anyway, it was his birthday yesterday. We did a sketch show where he was Steve Jobs, uh, or I was Steve Jobs, and I had to... Um, shave my head because um i don't know we had to commit to our characters appearances um and philip shaved it and not only did he shave it he shaved a, a, a receding hairline in my head and a bald spot because he wanted it to look more accurate which was you know I, i'll commit to the part but i was just unfortunately stuck with this weird haircut that was just growing back weird for like a month maybe two months and in, in the week after this actually it was our first visit to los angeles to decide if we wanted to move here so i was hanging out with all my cool la friends and they're even cooler friends with this dumb haircut including um uh donald glover was a uh, was a friend of a friend and this is before he really blew up and we were all hanging out in a group and i was walking right beside him on franklin and uh, i had this stupid haircut and i was self-conscious about it the whole time that's the worst haircut i've ever had uh second to right now because i'm self-conscious about it anyway all right next up let's take a look at what we got in the pipeline for videos coming out on the channel next week by the way thank you to everyone who tweeted us and for people who don't have time to get to your question we'll get to it next week if we can but anyway next week in the pipeline guys it's one of the biggest weeks of the year it's comic-con so We'll be looking at trailers for Aquaman and Shazam, and um, if we see it, Venom and Wonder Woman 1984. Also, it sounds like we might get a trailer for Fantastic Beast Crimes of Grindelwald and the movie Glass. Um, whatever we have uh, time to break down, we're going to try to get to it as fast as we can and get some interesting breakdowns and uh, catch everything that you might have missed from these trailers.
trailers. So just keep an eye out on our channel. Um, also, on Wednesday, we'll be releasing our breakdown of The Dark Knight Rises, our rewatch and our breakdown. Uh, you guys have been so supportive in, in checking out uh, The Dark Knight's breakdown and uh, The Batman Begins breakdown. It's been one of my favorite series to do. I think we've all put a ton of work into it and we're all very proud of it. So yeah, keep an eye out. Um, it's not as long as The Dark Knight video, but I did find some really cool stuff that I didn't catch the first couple times that I watched it. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, and now comes the time for our 15 second shout outs. Um, where normally each of us would have 15 seconds to shout out, plug or ramble about anything we want. Since it's just me, I'll just take each of the 15 seconds. Um, Oh, and I do have some things that I want to shout out. Okay, first off, I saw the movie Sorry to Bother You last weekend, which I think is great. If it's playing in your area, go watch it. It's like a, it's got, what's his face? He's from Atlanta. And who remember his name? What's his name? Lakeith Stanfield. He is so talented. And he was at the very beginning of Get Out, I believe, right? Yeah. And, well, he was throughout Get Out. But um, really great actor. And the, the film as a whole is just super inventive and goes to such bizarre heights that I, I don't, I can't even explain. I can't even put in words. It's just so well done. Um, I'll also give a shout out to Philip, whose birthday it was yesterday. Wish him a happy belated birthday on Twitter. Uh, it was also the birthday of uh, one of our editors, Aaron, um, yesterday. And he's a great guy. So um, if you know him, wish him a happy birthday, too. Uh, and one final uh, shout out. Um, I'm actually sad to report that John Schnepp has passed away. Uh, John Schnepp was a filmmaker and a comedian and host over with our friends at Collider. Uh, you may have seen some videos with um, uh, Maude and Sam have uh, done some, some stuff with them on Collider Heroes. And um, unfortunately, John suffered a stroke yesterday and he has been on life support and he passed away earlier today. Our thoughts go out to his family and his close friends and his loved ones. Um, he did what we do here and he did it in such a, a fun, uh, charming way. And he's a, he was a super smart, super funny guy. So uh, it's a sadder place without him, especially uh, in Comic-Con, which this is a time that would be very fun for him to be around. Um, anyway, well, thank you for watching this week's episode of New Rockstars News. I've been Eric Voss. You can tweet me at EA Voss. And normally there will be other hosts here, so don't worry. This is not a new change. This is just this week. Uh, you can comment down below, tweet us at New Rockstars, like this video, share it around, and subscribe to New Rockstars for deep dives and all the stuff you love. We'll catch you next week with um, non imaginary friends. Uh, say bye, Boba Fett. Say goodnight, baby Groot. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>